Chris, it seemed like one of those days if it could go wrong, it went wrong. Mm. Well, the scoreline certainly suggests that, and obviously the sending off does. Um, we started the game very well, but what we did do was concede uh, ground on the sending off and then concede from a set play, which I don't think, to be honest with you, they've, they've worked on really. Um, great goal, but off the cuff, I think. But yeah, they get one nil up. To then play with 10 men <coughs> and do your uh, utmost to get back in the game is commendable. But to not hold on after that point for long enough to put some uh, some psychology in there and tension and anxiety in their team, you know, to concede five minutes after, it kind of just, it's a stomach blow to you uh, if you're Carlisle. And it's, a, it's an elation to them because they've been able to get back off the canvas before they've been put in that position. It's a key part of the game, that, isn't it? Because there's a couple of chances to clear the ball, probably one chance to stop it getting into the box in the first place. And it's it's that moment we just needed to hold on a bit longer. Yeah, I think so. I think it would have made a big difference to the game. I do. What did you say to the lads after something like that when you get them into the dressing room and they've worked that hard to get back? Uh, well, you, you support elements of it, but you also understand why it's happened to them. You know, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You have to, you have to hit things, in my opinion, uh, with honesty and straight on. Um, because if you don't, it allows, uh, I don't know, negative difference. So they know my feelings. Um, they understand theirs. And they understand our current uh, position. Sending off a big moment as well. That just makes things that much harder, doesn't it, when it's 10 against 11 on a, on a tight pitch like this? Yeah, well, of course it does. And um, what Stevenage did today, they had a box midfield, so they had extra men in there and didn't play with wide men. But it was unable to get completely supported after 18 minutes, um, which made it very hard for Ozzy to uh, influence the game and for us to support him within that influence. Well, it's all within that 18 minutes, Jimmy, the influence that he could have had to have to substitute him. That's another consequence of the action, isn't it, of the, the sending off? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. you don't have to substitute Jimmy, um, but we definitely need somebody at that time of the game to make sure the bat falls as it is, um, especially when they're playing two strikers. But yeah, that was the decision we made. The last thing you need, isn't it, when the lads are going through a punishing schedule like this to, to be reduced to 10 men so early in a fixture? Yeah, but I'm positive. Jimmy's fresh. And uh, we've got to make sure that we understand why it didn't go right for us today uh, and pick a team to be competitive against the Leighton Orient. It's no lack of effort, is it? It's no lack of wanting to compete from the boys. It's just one of those days. Yeah, but there's been too many. And we've had a period where we've been winning or leading lots of them games but not winning them. So you have days like today and days like the Morecambe Day. day. It does happen. You have no divine right to win any game. Uh, the ref had a major control within that. Uh, don't get me wrong, I do believe he should have been sent off. But he, I, at the same point, he's not an outright goal scoring opportunity. He's pass the ball straight to a straight run that Magnus is coming out to collect. Um, Rod should read that a little bit better, but he hasn't. Um, and he's made that decision and he's been sent off. I'm very disappointed when we get chance to do the same. We get rugby tackled and our shirt get pulled. He doesn't even get a yellow card. And I, I'm, I'm, I just get like bemused by that. Rod will be beating himself up about that, I would imagine. He looked really unhappy with himself when he was walking off that. Yeah, of course he will. All, all the players are, we've been beaten. Not just Rod, it's everybody. Everybody associated to the club. We win together, we lose together. And what we need to do is make sure we learn quickly from that we have a fighting chance to win games and we have 13 of them left. So we need to make sure that we do our very best and utmost to make sure we're right at it for them fixtures. Listen to you on the radio there, you, again you were very honest, you were saying that there's got to be more of the days where we're celebrating and less of the days where we're thinking about what might have been. Well I think so, that's why I want to live my life and my career. It's. Uh, it's probably not the right time to talk about the uh, longevity of, of that year and the turnover of player and the difference and the energy and, and the way we've been able to play football. But we've been uh, putting put a, a major sort of uh, headlock type car crash to us, which wasn't our, wasn't our doing. And what we need to do 
is 100% play as well as we did at parts today as well as we did against Bradford be as gritty and uh, gutsy as we was against Grimsby and uh, Mansfield because you have to be in League 2 and play football and get on the right side of three points and that's what we're lucky to do I don't see any sense of them feeling sorry for themselves do you get any feeling of that in that dressing room? Well if they do they've got not a lot you know, do it, do it in seven weeks' time. There's no time to do that now. We play every Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, so there's no time to do that. The only time is to is to learn very quickly from from today's events, uh, readdress the situation. Obviously, Rod's unavailable, uh, different factors. Brennan, you know, I feel for him. He gave 100% today. He scores our goal. He's uh, powerful and professional and. He gets uh, leaned on, sat on in terms of uh, in the corner flag, trying to keep a ball in play. Uh, he's in the last inch of the pitch, doing his best in the last minute of a game. And unfortunately, he's going to go to hospital. I don't think the fans will have seen that. He's, he's wheeled off on a stretcher at the end there. That's the last thing we wanted to see. He's back, he's got his first goal for the club. He's, he's feeling good about himself and now we've got this. Just another punch to the gut. Personal to Brennan real big one to me too yes it is um, but ultimately in any sort of uh, competition uh, you know it is a war in terms of a footballing war you're going to take hits I feel for Brennan of course I do gutted for him and hopefully it ain't as bad as it initially looks but we'll see I know you get so frustrated at these results Chris but everybody's keeping going is there again a sense of that in that dressing room you have to, um, you do. I think though it was a little bit too easy when we're trying, but having saying that, we're pushing the game to try and get something from it in terms of them getting in a couple of times. Prior to that, they didn't really do that. Um, and like I said, if we go further than five, five minutes after we uh, equalise, they would definitely have started to become anxious, but we didn't. I'm very pragmatic about these situations. It's done, you'll learn from it. It's about Tuesday night now and letting Orient. Can't do anything about today now. Cannot. You can only ever do something when the game's on. And we tried our utmost from the uh, side to support the lads to gain things within that game. Um, but we didn't get enough. <laughs>